All right, today we're going to be talking about the Solomon Thundercross. Hold up, I'm trying to see something. Still in my own lane, they did not see me coming. If you know, you know, you know, it don't get much better than this. Just like your laundry. Wait till you get a load of this. So it's on to the next, on to the next one. They was looking for the next one. So These shoes are actually on the budget end of Solomon's trail shoe lineup. Coming in at $140, they are actually the cheapest full price shoes on Solomon's website. And to be honest, I've run in some of Solomon's uh, older, more budget trail shoes. And to be honest, I've walked away feeling like they were a waste of money. So I was interested to try the Thundercross and see if I would be as disappointed in these as I have been in some of the other more affordable Solomon shoes. And honestly, as I'm saying this, it's kind of depressing that $140 is on the low end. Like, I feel like it was only 10 years ago where you know, 100 bucks was getting you top of the line shoes. But maybe I just have bad memory. Anyways, let's jump into some of the technical specs on this shoe. Weighing at 10.2 ounces, they're not really on the light side, they're kind of more of a mid weight trail shoe. Uh, and this is partially due to the more aggressive tread on the bottom. Solomon saying that it's a five millimeter tread depth. The heel stack height, is 31 millimeters and the stack height in the forefoot is 27.2 millimeters which comes in at just under four millimeters for the drop which is actually right in the sweet spot for me personally anyways but let's talk about the pros to the shoe outside of the heel to toe drop first off let's talk about the tread depth and if you look at these shoes the the solomon website says that it's five millimeters and if you look at the Ultra Glide and the Sense Ride 5s, they're both saying that the lug depth is somewhere between three and five millimeters on those shoes. But just looking at the difference between this shoe, the Thundercross, and those other two shoes, the the aggressiveness of the tread is not even a comparison. And to be honest, I felt the difference on the trails in terms of traction on the terrain that I run on. So. Not only do these look more aggressive, but they've also performed in a much more aggressive way. So given that it only says that there's like a, at, a, at most a two millimeter difference from three millimeters to five millimeters. I mean, if you think about, if they are three, three millimeters, that's almost double the lug depth. So in that sense, it is almost twice as good in terms of traction. So. All I'm trying to say is that the traction on the shoe is fantastic. The lug depth, the aggressiveness of the tread on the shoe is 10 out of 10. I've already mentioned that the drop on the shoe is about four millimeters, and that seems to be the sweet spot for me on the trails. I'm not necessarily into the zero drop shoes like Ultra and some of the other ones, but I also don't like some of the Solomons that have like an eight millimeter to 12 millimeter drop. I like to be on the lower end personally, but it's kind of a personal choice. I don't think there's really a drop that is the best in my opinion. Another thing that I really like on this shoe is the breathability. It seems to have a perfect balance between breathability and protection. If you look around the perimeter of this shoe, they've got kind of a mud guard or maybe a, a moisture guard. And I've really enjoyed that kind of protection, which leads me to the other part where you want your foot protected is which is underneath the shoe and i don't i couldn't find any information on a rock plate so whether it's just the cushioning or a rock plate i have found the protection on the shoe uh on the for the i have found the protection for the bottom of the shoe to be fantastic i have run across very technical rocky terrain the outsole of this shoe has given the perfect amount of protection in my opinion not too much where it feels like you're too high or too stiff but also enough protection that you're not gonna hurt the bottom of your foot. And as always with most of Solomon's trail shoes, they have the quick lace system. I'm a huge fan and I will always list that on my list of pros on Solomon shoes. And last, before we move on to the list of cons for this shoe, it would be the looks. I think this shoe looks really cool. I think it looks aggressive. I like the color options. I'm just a big fan of the way this shoe looks, and I know that's subjective, but I wanted to list it on my list of pros. Uh, in terms of something that's a little bit more neutral, that would be part of the looks, and it's this, the tongue sticks up really high outside of the shoe. 
Like if you look, it sticks up so high and it doesn't, it didn't bother me in terms of functionality, but in terms of looks, I just think it looks a little funky. So I don't see the reason to have such a high tongue sticking out of the front of the shoe like that, but that's just my opinion. And then other on the neutral side um, is the cushioning. I, I didn't love the cushioning, like it wasn't like my favorite thing, but it also wasn't the worst. And, and when I say cushioning, I mean, it gave me a lot of protection, but I didn't feel the energy return like I have on some of the other Solomon shoes. So that's why I list it in the neutral section. Not good, but, not also, but also not bad. I'm gonna try and hurry and get through this because it is raining and I don't wanna break my camera. Okay, I moved really quick because it's raining pretty good and I moved the camera under the, the tree. Hopefully that helps, just so I can get through this really quick. So let's go through the cons. First off, if you watched my review of both the Sense Ride 5 and the Ultra Glides, you'll know that I had a little bit of an issue on the Ultra Glides and a huge issue on the Sense Ride 5 with the tongue, where the tongue attaches to the rest of the upper part of the shoe. If you can see right here where my finger's at, I'm touching the tip of the tongue where they have sewn in the, the tongue material to the rest of the upper part of the shoe. Anyways, there's a significant amount of excess fabric in the Sense Ride 5s. This also has excess fibre fabric that can rub on the top of your foot. And I experienced that just a little bit with these shoes. But I figured out that if I, unlike the Sense Ride 5s, if I wear these a little bit looser, I do not have any substantial, any noticeable rubbing. So just keep that in mind that you may need to wear your shoes a bit looser in the front on these or, or else you might get a little bit of uh, rubbing from that material kind of on the top of your foot behind your toes. The second thing that I have on my list of cons is not something that I've had any issues with yet, but I read about 27 reviews on the Solomon website and some people are complaining that the durability, at least on the rubber on the bottom of the foot, on the bottom of these shoes, are, is wearing out. And I've put just over 50 miles on these shoes and I can't see any noticeable wear and tear. And some people were saying that they were seeing it as early as 80 miles. So I'm, you know, another week away from hitting around 80 miles and I don't see any really, really any wear and tear. So to be uh, determined on that, and I will keep you guys updated in the comments if I do start to see any noticeable wear and tear outside of, you know, normal breakdown of running shoes. And my last uh, complaint about this shoe, my last thing on the list of cons, would be that this shoe doesn't feel super fast. And that's to be expected. I mean, it's not a race shoe. This is a shoe that you're supposed to wear on your training runs, I think. I don't think it was designed to be a, a race day shoe. So, like, when I run in the S-Lab Ultra 3s, the latest and greatest S-Lab shoes, those feel like they're a part of my foot. I love those shoes and I feel fast and quick and agile in those. And you just don't get that with these. These feel like the workhorse that you wear on everyday training runs. And I think that's what they were designed for. So while it is on my list of cons, it's also, you know, just something to be expected from this kind of shoe. So take that for what it's worth. Overall and in conclusion, these shoes are a solid option for trail running shoes in my opinion. I don't think this, these are a waste of money by any means, as long as you know what you're getting. If you're looking for a race day shoe, these are probably not the shoes for you. But if you're looking for a solid pair of shoes with some mildly aggressive tread and protection, these are a great option. So for me personally, these are gonna be up there with the Ultra Glide 2s as my workhorse everyday trainer shoes. And so I have really no big complaints, no deal breakers by any means. But I hope this, sh this video was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments down below if you've run in these shoes and what your thoughts are. But thanks for watching. Such a beautiful scene